With the second of the two 1,000 events for the WTA over and done with, and some surprise results, and also on the men's side, some big upsets happening this week. We had some really interesting changes to the rankings with lower ranked players getting a real big boost in the rankings, but let's go have a look at who actually won last week because we had some really interesting results. So starting at the Dubai Championships, Paulini takes out Kalen Skyer, 467575 to lift her first WTA 1000 trophy. And that tournament was stacked. It had a lot of the top four players playing, yet in the final, we had an unseeded final. So very, very interesting. And Paulini got a massive boost in the rankings because of it. Over on the men's side, in Rio, we had Baez taking out Navone in the final, 6261. And that tournament had Elk resident. Of course, he was the defending finalist. So massive boost for Baez in the rankings because of that 500 points. Over in Los Cabos, we had Jordan Thompson taking out both Zverev and and Rude along the way to get the title, his first ever title on the ATP, 6376. And over in Doha, we had Kashinov taking up Menzik, 7664, to lift another trophy in his career. So, really random winners, I guess you could say, because as I mentioned, we did have players like, you know, Sviontek, Sabalenka, Rabakina, Goff playing in Dubai. We had Alcaraz in Rio. We had Zverev and Pass, Los Cabos, and Rublev played Doha. So, yeah, some unlikely champions this week, and it resulted in a lot of different rankings changes outside the top 10. Let's go have a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week. Starting with Paulini. She goes up 13 spots to number 14 in the world, which is, of course, a career high for her after getting 1,000 points for winning in Dubai. Kellen Skyer goes up 16 spots to 24 in the world, also a career high for her after making the final of Dubai. And Jordan Thompson, he goes up 8 spots to number 32 in the world, highest ranking he's ever been in his career after lifting his first ATP trophy. The players that have gone down in the rankings, Krajikova, she goes down 9 spots to 21 in the world after not playing in Dubai and losing all the points she made from last year by winning the trophy. Cam Norrie, also losing a lot of points from last year's Rio trophy. He goes down... Sp six spots to number 29 in the world. And Andy Murray, he's gone down 17 spots to number 67 in the world after losing all the points he made from the Doha final from last year. So all the players that did really well last year, unable to replicate that this year and really getting penalized in the rankings. Okay, let's start on the WTA because there were some small changes to the top 10. Nothing up the top. Sviantec staying at number one despite not replicating last year's final in Dubai. Still ahead of Sabalenka at number two with Goff at three. Rabakina at four, and Pagula at five. Jabur stays at number six, but there was a change on the bottom, with Von Drusova going up to number seven, pushing Zhang down to number eight after she made a good run in Dubai. And Maria Zachary back into the top 10 after one week of falling out of the top 10, going up two spots to number nine, pushing both Ostapenko down to number 10, and Mukova dropping out of the top 10 completely after, again, not playing another tournament due to injury. She won't be back for a while, so Mukova's ranking, unfortunately, is going to drop a lot if she's not able to play. A couple of changes there. There, down the bottom half of the top 10 after some interesting results in Dubai. Having a look at the race of the finals now, and Sabalenka still at number one after that Australian Open win with Rabakina at number two, Sviontek at number three, and Zhang at number four. Ostapenko, she stays at five, but we do have a change on the bottom with Paulini going up 25 spots to that number six spot after winning in Dubai. Getting a thousand points really does help at this time of the season. She pushes Goff down to number seven. Kellen Sky also goes up eight spots back into the top 10 to number eight after making the final of Dubai. Pushing Yastremska down to number 9. Pavlyuchenkova goes down to number 10. And Noskova and Kazakin are both falling out of the top 10 because of those boosts. So, again, starting to take a little bit of shape. Some familiar names there. And good to see Kalen Skyer after a great start to the season getting back into that race of the finals after making another run at a tournament. Over on the men's side now, and no changes with Djokovic staying at 1 and Elkris staying at number 2. Sinner stays at 3 with Medvedev at number 4. Rublev at 5 and Zverev at 6. Runa, he stays at number 7 with her catch at number 8. Demonor stays at 9, and Fritz will stay at number 10 for now. But there is some players next week that are playing in Dubai and Acapulco. In fact, everyone from Medvedev down is playing next week. So we could see some changes to the rankings depending on how well they do, of course. Both Acapulco and Dubai are worth 500 points. So there is a chance that we do see some changes to the bottom half of the top 10. Because you can see there with the points, there's a lot of players that only have a couple hundred points between them and the guy behind them. Looking at the race of the finals, and Sinner, Australian Open champion, still at number 1 with Medvedev at number number two, Zverev at three and Djokovic at four, but we do have a change with Rublev going up one spot to number five, pushing Diminor down number six after having a better week last week in Doha than Diminor had in Los Cabos, and Baez, he goes up 30 spots into that number seven spot after putting 500 points on his total, pushing Dimitrov down to number eight, Herkash down to number nine, Fritz down to number 10, 
and Tommy Paul gets kicked out of the top 10 completely. So one big tournament at this time of the year, getting 500 points really can help your ranking when it comes to the race of the finals. So a massive boost there for Baez. So there it is. That is the both the race of the finals and the A to B rankings and the WTA rankings. Not too many changes to the top of the tree yet, but remember Indian Wells and Miami are coming up. Djokovic is going to play those events for the first time in over like two years or something like that. Of course, Fiontek, Sabalenka, Rabakina all did well at those events last year. So we've got to see how they play and how they do because their ranking might be at stake, especially Rabakina, who made the final of both, winning one and losing the other. So she really has a lot of points at stake. Also, Medvedev, he also did the same thing. But on the men's side of things, Sinner as well, Elkarez. So they all have a lot of points to defend over the next couple of weeks. But let me know down in the comments below. What has been the biggest shock for you this week in the rankings? Is it the fact that last week, it was like the battle of the underdogs or the, the, the underdogs winning. It was so random. Pellini, Kalinskaya, what a final that was. And really random because of the fact that we had so many players playing in that event. So many top players playing in that Dubai event. But there it is, the rankings for another week. Starting to take a little bit of shape with the race of the finals. And no big changes yet to the top 10.